Hey church, I hope you are doing well. I'm recording this sermon recap video for you on Sunday morning with a bunch of people running around my house right before I get ready to preach this message. So hopefully I should be able to recap it for you uh, here fairly easily. Uh, this week I did part two of Psalm 145. In this sermon we talked about the communicable attributes of God. And in talking about the communicable attributes uh, attributes of God, we covered five attributes. We covered the fact that God is holy, God is just, God is full of mercy, God is full of grace, and God is full of love. So when we talked about God's holiness, we talked about him being completely separate, completely distinct from all of his creation. And we said that we, we can't even think about God's holiness and then imagine it even better because God is just that holy, right? Um, and so in the same way that, that God is holy, that he is pure, that he is without sin, he calls us as his children to be holy, to be separate, to be, to be distinct, and to walk in this world in a way that is different from the world as it walks um, in darkness rather than in the light. And then we talked about God being just. We said that God, because he is holy, must punish sin. And because he, he must punish sin, in, in his justice, he pronounces a punishment upon us for, um, for offending his holiness, for disobeying his law. And, and this just punishment is separation from him. And for those who continue to uh, reject the sacrifice that Jesus has made, that will result in an eternal punishment. And, and many people struggle with this concept and with this idea, but the fact that God is holy and the fact that God is just requires him to hand out this penalty for those who reject the offer of Jesus. But it's in the offer of Jesus that we begin to see the mercy of God. We see that God is full of mercy, that he is full of compassion toward his creation. We said that mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. We do deserve uh, death and hell because of our sin. But in his great mercy, he sends Christ to redeem us, to buy us back, to make a way that we could be forever re reconciled to him in heaven where he would eternally pour out his grace upon us. Mercy is God giving us what we uh, God is not giving God not giving us what we do deserve, and grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. We get to be with God forever. We get to be with Christ forever. We get to be in heaven forever, where where there will be no sin, there will be no sorrow, there will be no shame. We get to be with God forever. We get to experience His grace here upon this earth. But church. The grace that we will experience is beyond anything we can even imagine at this point. And we said that not only does God uh, exhibit mercy and grace, but God truly loves us. I mean, how incredible is it that God actually loves you and me? He fully knows you and he fully loves you. Yes, that's your deepest desire and your deepest fear. Your deepest desire is to be fully known and to be fully loved. But yet, that's why you fear being known, because you are afraid that if someone knew the true you, they would not love you. But yet in God, we find our deepest desire met and our deepest fear overcome, because your God truly knows you. He knows you fully inside and out, and he fully loves you because of the blood of Jesus. Have a great week.